Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's April 27th. These are your headlines. First up, we're hearing about some squid moving into Nantucket Sound, which has brought some migrating bass with them. Also hearing about great tog fishing, really from Massachusetts all the way into Connecticut. And lastly, hearing about a lot of striped bass activity up inside Narragansett Bay. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a couple of news items to throw you away. The first one concerns the tog fishing in Connecticut. The season is going to close on the 30th, that's Sunday, so you've got four days to make it happen. Uh, the bite has been good and getting better, and that's sort of typical. It's probably, you know, it's going to shut down right when it starts to really pick up. Um, that's what it does every year. But um, just wanted to make sure you guys know that. And also, you know, the weather for the weekend looks a little eh. So if you're really dead set on getting some tog and you're a Connecticut fisherman, you may want to uh, call in a sick day tomorrow uh, because uh, it might be your last chance to do it before the season opens back up. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the giveaway, which is ongoing. Um, we're just about to cross into May, so we've only got about a little less than three weeks before, um, before we pick the next winner. I do have two great photos this time around. I'm seeing a lot more photos coming in weekly now, which is great to see as the fishing season starts to ramp up, uh, start seeing more and more stuff. Um, Got those two darters uh, ready to give away. I got some Yozuri stuff I'm going to give away as well. So this is going to be a good one. It's going to be a good round. Uh, we're going to give away a lot of stuff. We're going to make a lot of people happy. Um, if you're not familiar with how this whole thing works, you just got to send your photos in to me at danderson at thefisherman.com. Make sure you put contest or giveaway in the subject line just so I can find them easily and so I know what they're for. Or you can text them to the number on the screen. And the only rules are it's got to be a recent catch and it's got to show you with the fish. Can't be laying on the ground there. You know, you got to try to compose a nice shot. And this is a, uh, you know, this is an impress me contest, you know. So I pick my favorite few and uh, send out lures to those lucky winners. And uh, I'm sure we're going to start another one after that. So once again, send them in to me at, to my email, deanderson at thefisherman.com, or text them to the number on the screen. And, um, We'll pick our next. We'll pick our next winner. <laughs> Heading up into the North Shore of Massachusetts, we talked to the crew over at Surfland Tackle. They said they still think they're about seven to ten days away from the first fresh stripers showing up up there. Uh, but there's been some good freshwater fishing, there's been some shad fishing going on. Uh, a lot of guys getting out now in this wonderful weather. For a little more on that and some of the other fisheries that happen up there on the North Shore, let's throw it over now to James Jukes. Just doing a little trout fishing before work this morning. Yep, there's uh, a number of ponds up on the North Shore here that got stocked with browns. Uh, just check the mass page and uh, you'll find them. Uh, anyways, the shad has been good. I've been getting them every morning, still. Uh, normal locations. The pike bite's been off the hook too. I saw a guy yesterday with a 43 inch fish. Uh, also the largemouth and the smallmouth fish have been good. And the holdover has been pretty good, but I suspect Somebody next week's gonna have their first fresh stripers up here on Cape Ann. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, how can't you beat this stuff, Dave? Morning before work? Come on, get off the phones, get out and fish. All right, Dave, that's about it from up here. Subscribe to The Fisherman Magazine today and compete in the Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. It's the Fisherman subscriber-only season-long region-wide multi-species fishing competition to win a Steigercraft and many more prizes. Subscribe, fish, win. 
heading down from the North Shore. Uh, we are hearing about more of that, of, of the haddock fishery going on now. Um, I know there's a few guys running trips now for haddock. I know Black Rose is one of them, so you can give him a call if you want to get in on that. Um, a lot of the fishing, a lot of the best fishing is happening at Stellwagen, but they are getting some fish on the inshore rock piles as well. I know Stone Ledge has been putting out some fish over the last week. Um, the one thing that's been sort of a hindrance to that has just been the weather. I mean, we've got really great weather today, but we've had a lot of days with big winds, big seas, uh, just forced the uh, cancellation of a lot of trips and forced a lot of uh, haddock fishermen to double down on the Dramamine. But, um, you know, when we get a nice day like today, the fishing has been pretty darn good. So that's something that you can uh, that you can get in on now. Uh, no flounder reports yet. I guess water temps are hovering around that 46 degree mark right now. we got to get up over 50 before those flounder really start to chew. Um, got a lot of nice weather coming. A little rain in there mixed in, but uh, maybe we'll get lucky and by the time we run the next report we'll have some flounder stuff to talk about either from the Cape or from, you know, that south of Boston area. Um, also did hear about the first quote-unquote fresh striper from uh, the Plymouth area that was sent in by a friend of the report here, Mike Dixon. It was a keeper sized fish, 28 inch fish. He said it had some sea lice on it. Um, I have my doubts about whether it's actually a fresh fish that migrated up from the south somewhere. I think it probably dropped out of one of the holdover rivers up there near Boston and just kind of picked up a few lice on its way to wherever Mike caught it. Um, but nevertheless, it's good news either way. Great to see some, you know, fish migrating around. It's great to see that happening. Um, as we get out onto the Cape, we are hearing more striper news. Um, you know, Scorton Creek and up inside Barnstable Harbor. Uh, a lot of those holdover fish are starting to wake up with this warm weather, starting to move around a little bit. Um, so they're becoming more active. Also hearing about really good smallmouth bass fishing in several of the ponds on the Cape, uh, Mashpee Wakeby being one of them. And uh, as the goose posted, it is a really good way to sort of take up those last five to ten days before the stripers really get here in big numbers. Um, you can go catch some smallmouth, they'll, they'll take a variety of different methods, they'll bite day and night. Um, and now's a great time to chase those fish. So uh, that's a viable fishery. Trout fishing still very good out on the Cape. I know that they put in a bunch of those broodstock browns last week. Um, and those fish, you know, they, they could be up over six pounds. So um, I know they did long pond, they probably did little pond. Um, I went online and tried to find a post from the DFW, but they hadn't given away the uh, exact coordinates, at least as far as I could find. But they probably hit all the usual suspects. You know, they hit long, they hit little, they probably hit uh, Peters. They probably hit Spectacle, um, maybe Hamblin, maybe some of the other ponds inside of Nickerson State Park. But in either case, that bonus fishery is there. And, um, you know, it's a great opportunity to get a really big trout. So that's something that um, you guys can count on out there. Um, as I talked about in the headlines, we also heard about some squid moving into Nantucket Sound, which has brought along some stripers with it. Uh, these do seem like migratory fish. Probably some of those fish that were going along Buzzards Bay last week I uh, got on those squid and just followed them around. I got a report from one of our readers today. Um, said he was kind of bouncing around along those um, salt ponds between like Watch Hill, not Watch Hill, like <laughs> Nobska and Wakoit, and um, found some bass in one of the ponds that was just gorging themselves on squid. Uh, most of those fish were in like the 20 to 25 inch range, but he did have one that was just under 30 inches. Um, some of these fish had some sea lice on them too, so you know this is a uh, this is just another sort of advancement in the stripers coming along the coast here. Uh, getting up into Buzzards Bay, we're hearing about tog fishing now, uh, really starting to pick up. Guys are getting them all along the Massachusetts shoreline, getting them out around Nobska, getting them on some of the harbor break walls uh, throughout Nantucket Sound. So that fishery is really starting to come up. Um, and with the togs showing up in the canal now, we're starting to think more about stripers in the canal. I talked to East End Eddie today. Um, he said he's going to resume his video reports next week. He said he did fish the breaking tides, um, you know, these April breaking tides in the canal. Uh, no fish landed, no fish seen. There was a rumor of a 34-inch striper taken at Bell Road sometime last week. Rumors are what they are. Definitely possible. Probably, probably, probably a rumor. 
um, and nothing more than that. But there are fish all along that shoreline. We've got fish in, um, I know we've got fish in the Wee Wee Antic. I know we've got fish in the Wareham River. There's probably fish in Buttermilk Bay. I know there's fish in Mattapoisin Harbor. I'm sure there's fish, you know, all along from New Bedford over to Payton Arum and on and on from there. Uh, so we've got stripers moving in all along the along that coastline. A lot of fish in Rhode Island and they're just going to keep bleeding over into Massachusetts so that fishery is just going to keep getting better and better. Exciting stuff. It's a great time of year. And to wrap up the Massachusetts report we're going to head inland now and we're going to talk to Steve from Steve's UV Leaves. At the risk of sounding like a broken record the Connecticut River is high and dirty again. As you can see it is blown up. The, the fishing has been absolutely atrocious on the main river, uh, forcing everybody to go into the tributaries. Uh, after the rain this weekend, the tributaries absolutely lit up. Uh, tributaries in Connecticut, below the border, the fishing livened up, but it wasn't stellar. Um, above the border here in Mass, the tributary bite was absolute fire on Sunday. Um, multiple anglers hooking up at the same time uh it was a good time on sunday monday was pretty good also um hopefully with the water dropping in the main river it'll clear up and we'll be able to fish below the dam keep in mind you cannot fish above the bridge in south hadley anymore that's owned by hoyle gas electric they don't want us fishing there anymore. We're not allowed to fish up there. That's private property, and the environmental police are gonna be passing out tickets if they catch you up there. Um, hopefully the, the main river cleans up so we can get up there. Uh, if not, the tributary bites are fire. If we can maintain water out there uh, leading into the weekend, it should be pretty good. We're supposed to get a little bit of rain this weekend. I'm not sure how much it's kind of the weather forecast is kind of vague but the river forecast does show that it keeps dropping so I don't think this rain is going to affect it too much it might just keep it at fishable levels um, that's all I got for this week hope to see you on the water if you have any questions don't hesitate to reach out to me at stevesubleaves.com over in Rhode Island the big news right now everybody's just fired up about striped bass um, the Narragansett Bay has lots of fish in it right now. Um, now there's some debate again about whether these are fresh fish or holdover fish. I think they're holdover fish. I think they're just coming out of all their little holds, all their little places that they winter over. This warmer water, this nicer weather has got them kind of getting more and more active. We've got some herring runs that are starting to see more and more fish and it's just got these fish fired up. Um, so people are getting them day and night. They get them on darters and swimmers and soft plastics at night. And there's a lot of top water action during the day. You might get them on like a little Yuzuri top knock. You might get them on a jumping minnow. You might get them on a, you know, ounce and a half pencil popper. You might get them on a small super strike. But um, good numbers of bass and decent sized fish, especially way up the bay, especially way up toward Providence. Um, seeing fish in that 25 to 35 inch range and um, you know, good numbers of fish. Also heard of a few bigger ones. I heard of two fish from different locations that weighed 28 pounds. Now that's not the normal uh, size that you're going to find, but that is, you know, it's a sizable fish. That's a, that's a heck of a fish for April. Um, moving down the bay, we've got fish in the corners of the beaches in Newport. We've got fish all along South County. Uh, for a little bit more on the striper bite and a few other things that are happen on, happening on the eastern half of Rhode Island, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecky. Thanks, Dave. Hey guys, nice to be reporting again from the East Bay area, southeast of Massachusetts. Um, got some good reports here, and just like I said last week, the things were going to heat up, and they definitely did. Lots of striped bass up inside the Barrington, Warren rivers. You could also get them off of Barrington Beach, Colt State Park, wherever you are along the bay in the East Bay here, you're going to get on some striped bass. Uh, mainly schoolies. I uh, did get some reports of some fish in the 32-inch class. So uh, that, that would be a slot fish, uh, which would be a keeper. Um, I had an opportunity to fish in the Barrington River Bridge uh, near the old police station in Barrington. And uh, we caught lots of fish up to 25 inches, which uh, they're actually very fat fish, uh, loaded up on bait. Um, as I was fishing, I could see heron. I could see pogies. Uh, I saw a lot of needlefish uh, swimming around in there. So uh, there's, there's a lot of bait. 
And there's a lot of opportunities for you as the angler to get out there and uh, catch these fish um, in these in the eddies on the bridge. Uh, I was using white uh, Berkeley gulp paddle tail shad in the five inch, um, and mostly like mostly every single cast uh, we were connecting with fish. Uh, getting to the tatog in those rivers, same idea. There's lots of tatog in there. They're getting up in there, they're getting ready to spawn. Uh, mainly. All the way, mainly you can get them on the Warren and Barrington side, and I was getting them behind the American Tourista. Um, I had reports of guys catching them all the way up to the White Church Bridge in Barrington. So uh, they've definitely moved in, and they're getting ready to do their thing. Uh, crabs would be your best bet, and you can you want crabs locally here in the East Bay. You can head over to Lucky Bait and Warren. Um, if you don't know their schedule, you can just check online. Uh, but I believe they're open every day till 6, 6 p.m. Uh, trout fishing, bass fishing on on the hot water there, the, still good, still good. Still trout around Melville Pond, uh, still some big bass being caught in some of these local ponds here in Swansea. Uh, I've heard bass up to six and seven pounds, uh, mainly on wake baits, uh, which is uh, a good bait to use when it's uh, at dusk. But uh, some chatter baits are working too, that's what I've heard. And uh, guys are just using uh, worms. Uh, and shiners, live shiners, are uh, doing well. So uh, if you want to get out there and catch a lot of fish, there's lots of opportunities uh, to get out there. So uh, tight lines, guys, and we'll catch you next week. Heading out of the bay, uh, or at least into the approaches of the bay, the tog fishing is starting to get really good. Um, I know there's fish coming out of the Sconnet River. Uh, guys are getting them from like the Stone Bridge area. I know there's fish coming out of the west, uh, the East Passage. Um, which, you know, all along that Newport side. And the fish are in shallower water now, you know, pretty much the deepest fish I'm hearing about are like 40 feet, and, you know, more of the fish are up 20, 10 to 20 feet. Um, so this fish are up shallow, they're getting more and more active. And over these next couple of weeks, it should get better and better. We're lucky again in Rhode Island, we don't have the season closing at the end of April, so we've got lots of opportunity to come. Um, outside, you know, in that same area that we've been talking about for a while now, from like Satuous Point over to Brenton Point, down to Beaver Tail, and then all the way out to Point Judith, that's been like the epicenter of activity for tog. And they're getting some nice uh, codfish in some of these areas too as bycatch. So uh, that's another thing that is, uh, that's happening right now. The boats that are going out looking for cod, I would call their results so-so. You know, they're putting in a lot of time. Everyone's going home with some fillets, they're getting some short fish. Um, but it definitely has not been gangbusters. Um, they're definitely going to be looking forward to the porgy season opening up and, uh, you know, looking into the future with, uh, with sea bass coming on as well. Um, but that is obviously still a viable fishery. And then out along the South County beaches and up into the breachways and into the breachway ponds, uh, lots of striped bass activity. Again, mostly on the schooly side, but there's definitely some keeper sized fish. Uh, in the mix all through there and it could happen any day now. We're going to see a push of fish soon that's going to be, you know, 30 inches and up. And, um, you know, this is, it's an early run this year. I think I called that a few reports ago. And when we have an early run, we typically have a short time of small fish before bigger fish just follow in right on their tails. So that's exciting stuff. And as we'll hear in the Connecticut report, there's some really nice fish coming into the Western Sound now. So it's just... You know, everything's just happening ahead of a schedule, and I like it when things happen ahead of schedule. Last thing in Rhode Island is the freshwater fishing, good nighttime bass fishing. I've been uh, largemouth bass fishing. I've been doing a little bit of that this week, uh, finding some bonus smallmouth as well. And uh, trout fishing, still putting out good numbers from all the stocked ponds. So uh, lots of stuff going on in Rhode Island, and uh, that's what I have for you in, in the ocean state. Hopping over into Connecticut, of course, we have blackfish season closing on Sunday. So you got to make it happen, you know, make hay while the sun shines, as they say. Um, the fishing's been decent, and it's been decent pretty much from one end of the state to the other. Um, Niantic Bay has been a good spot to find some fish, or just outside of Niantic Bay, and then out toward New Haven. New Haven Walls, out to Norwalk, and out to the New York border. Uh, they're finding good sizes of fish there as well. Lots of keepers and just over keeper sized fish. With some bigger fish, you know, fish up into the eight pound range, you know, 20, 21 inches. Haven't heard of any giants this year. Not like last year when Matt Stone got that 23 pound monster. That has not happened this year to my knowledge. Um, but there are fish to be had. There are fish out there biting. 
and it is a viable fishery, you could, but you're going to have to take advantage of it quickly. Uh, moving over to striped bass, in the extreme eastern sound, it seems like it's a lot of small fish. It seems like 18 to 24 inches tops. Uh, but as you get closer to the Connecticut River, the fish get bigger, the action gets more consistent, and um, you can actually target some bigger fish. You can go up into the herring runs, or you can throw just bigger baits, and uh, you've got an opportunity to get some decent sized fish. The guys that are throwing worms on the bottom are getting lots and lots of schoolies. Of course, they're all using circle hooks, don't forget that. Um, <clears throat> but both of those fisheries are very good, and uh, the bass fishing is just really starting to wake up now. For more on what's going on in the Connecticut River, especially regarding the bass fishing, let's toss it over now to Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. Hey, what's up, guys? For this week's fishing report, um, <clears throat> the water temperatures are hovering around 54 degrees. The biggest change I've seen, especially after that rainstorm, is that a lot of the stripers have moved out of their winter holding areas. So I would expect over the next week, to start finding stripers in their springtime areas. Um, I have seen some stripers with whole adult bunker in their mouths. So that is a good sign that there is some bunker um, around that these stripers are feeding on. Um, <clears throat> haven't heard much about the spring tog bite. Uh, I would say there's a couple days left of the season and if you have a calm weather window to go out and try it and i think you're gonna get a few keepers good luck and then heading up the connecticut river valley i know the smallmouth fishing has been good i know that there's been some carp going on for more on that and a few other fisheries that we've got in that region of the state let's toss it over now to rowan lytle hey everybody uh, i'm out here live today and a big bowfin in the net caught on a mop fly sight fished by my buddy Noah here. We're out scouting essentially today. Uh, I wanted to cover some water that I haven't fished that much this season. Although the uh, air temperatures are much cooler this week, uh, the Connecticut River got a really, really high from the rain over the weekend and snow melt up north. And that's pushed a lot of our, our oddball species, our big carp and our bowfin here up into the shallows and into the, the flooded woods, as you can see. Uh, what I'm in right now and uh, the fishing's incredible. I'm having really great fishing both myself and with clients um, This is a cool fishery. It can be difficult at times You may go a long time uh, on these days without catching much But when you do it's often a quality fish like this like this exceptional both in here But uh, it's a good game for kayaks and canoes. It's a little difficult on kayaks You're not gonna see as many fish because you're low um, but if you have something like a John boat or a canoe that you can stand in effectively, uh, then you can have a good shot at catching these fish up in the flooded timber. Uh, get out there. Good luck, everybody. Heading west along the coast, you've got opportunities for stripers all along that area. Um, any, one of the, any one of the river mouths is going to be holding fish right now. Any place you know has a herring run is going to be holding some fish right now. And you're going to see a lot of these stripers moving up into the estuaries. So going out there with light tackle, little poppers, little spooks, maybe the X-Walk from, um, from Game On Lures might be a good one to go toss around up there. You might get your first keeper of the year. Um, also, lots of tug opportunity. Any one of the walls, the New Haven walls, the walls outside of, um, outside of the Connecticut River, any one of those harbor walls is going to have an opportunity to produce some fish for you. And then as we get way out west, you know, it only gets better from there. Some really big striped bass um, out, in, out in, over the New York border. Good tog fishing. For more on that and some of the other fisheries in the western part of the state, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. The striped bass fishing this past week has really exploded in our local waters. We got, you know, big schools of migrating stripers pushing on through. I was out yesterday with my fiance and we did a really good number on them on the flutter spoons, you know, docks and trolling mojos. Places like the OB buoy, 28C and 11B. Diamond jigging this time of year is, can be really productive too. I would try places like Green's Ledge diamond jigging and then 11B and the OB. Up and tight in our tidal rivers, estuaries, harbors and along our beaches, the striped bass and fishing really remains uh, strong too. Guys are, you know, slinging sandworms, small shads, especially with all this peanut bunker around, the small swim shads work really well. To our west, like City Island, Execution, Hemsed, Mamaroneck, down to the Throg's Neck, you know, we're seeing big schools of stripers push on through, you know, a lot of slots and over slots. We haven't seen real big, big fish yet. They're still spawning up in the Hudson, but we're, everybody's waiting for them to push through. 
You know, we've seen some nice black fish still shallow. Guys are doing really good. The bite's not red, red hot, but this time of year you get a lot of quality fish. And then on the freshwater side, like trout fishing, the saga tuck, we've seen some five, four pound trout, but mostly a lot of largemouth bass action and then um, some walleye caught. You know, shiners are definitely the bait of choice this time of year or some worms, but try throwing some small rapalos, those work well. And then the Nauk River, Saugatuck, and Mianus are fishing really well. And also the Mill River, small Phoebes, small rooster tails, you know, trout worms, your favorite little jigs work really well. And as looking forward, you know, now's the time to get the boat in. It seems like the striped bass fishing has, you know, two to three weeks earlier in our local waters with, you know, schools of migrating fish putting through. So get the boat in and get out fishing. Good luck. That's what happened for you guys in the reports this week. I mean, it's the end of April. The weather's perfect. A lot of fishing going on. We've got early stripers rolling in. We've got nighttime largemouth bass fishing. We've got a lot of smallmouth bass going on. We've got tog and we've got squid moving in. I mean, things are just popping right now so there's no excuse not to get out there hopefully the reports will inspire you to get out there and go catch something whatever you catch though take some pictures and send them in to me at deanderson at thefisherman.com and if you're not a subscriber to the fisherman i highly recommend heading over to our website that's thefisherman.com there's enough free content on there to give you a full taste of what we offer we cover everything from delaware all the way up to maine and every fishery you can think of whether it's freshwater saltwater boat kayak surf fly it doesn't matter we cover it all